What does it mean for a speaker to be bright sounding? To me, when I say a speaker is bright, I mean high frequencies are full sounding. You know, it comes, comes at you a little more, a little more exciting. And I don't necessarily mean sharp or harsh, but perhaps because people associate the word bright with harshness or sharpness, I don't like to use that word. Granted, it is not the listener's fault. Really, a lot of speakers that are bright sounding can often be sharp or harsh as well. But then can a speaker sound bright without being harsh or sharp? Well, the Elac Vela 407 to me is a bright speaker, but it, it is not sharp or harsh. It's quite the opposite actually. It's silky smooth. This is a six inch ASXR driver that's inside the Elac Velas. ASXR stands for Aluminum Sandwich Extended Range Diaphragms. It has this crystal shape going on that's quite eye-catching. But this crystal shape is more than just an eye candy. There's actually a purpose for this. The crystal shaped inverse aluminum dome is glued to a paper cone in a special process in a special way to make the desired sandwich construction resembling this surface of a large crystal that you see here. According to ELAC, the aluminum foil stamping stiffens the aluminum dome, which diminishes resonances and improves power handling and also coloration. Also, the voice coil is not only joined to the neck of the paper cone, but also to the bottom of the aluminum dome, which allows the velas to extend down in the lower base region much easily. So with this fine German engineering, it allows this six inch woofer to perform essentially like a much larger woofer. And there is two of these in each of the speakers. This is the Jet 5 Tweeter. Elac took over Jet Tweeter system in 1993 from a Berlin speaker company called ARES. And since then, for almost 30 years, they have honed this tweeter and implemented it in many of their speaker models. ELAC's signature jet tweeter is their advanced development of Dr. Heal's air motion transformer, a transducer without the conventional voice coil assembly. The jet tweeter has folded captain foil membrane, squeezing air out of its fold at high velocities. And this is the trick, not in the direction of the listener, but crosswise. This concept displaces a lot of air with minimal effort. And it has this uh, waveguide which, is, which helps with the sensitivity and the dispersion of the tweeter. So if I put this together here like this, the advantage of a tweeter like this is a lower distortion, higher sensitivity, um, because it takes minimal effort to displace air, and better dispersion compared to something like a standard ribbon tweeter. It has two ports, one at the bottom and one at the lower back. It has a four-way binding post, allowing you to buy wire or buy amp if you wish to. And this shape of the speaker is to reduce the cabinet resonance as much as possible. The speakers are also quite slim, so it can fit into most rooms. And we will get into the placement of these speakers in just a little bit. But now, let's talk about how it sounds. Like I said in the beginning of this video, the high frequencies are not sharp or harsh at all for me on the speaker. It is rather smooth. I didn't find it as smooth on the previous ELAC 400 series. There is serious amount of detail, air, and resolution and clarity to the sound. It is fast and transparent, even more so than speakers like MagnaPans, which are panel speakers. It is also very sweet sounding on the top end, but it has that velvety smoothness to it that's very refined even to high-end audio standards. Whenever I hook this speaker up, the first thing that I notice is how open the top end is. It just feels like it has more room on the top. You do not get this type of openness with uh, even speakers like Wilson Audio, Focal, or Sonos Favor. It is something unique to the Vela 407. The mid frequency is pretty neutral. It is not too forward or too laid back. Instruments and vocals have a great tone and sweetness to the sound. In fact, if anything, it has a slight warmth and wetness to it that make it more full sounding. The background is pitch dark 
and leading and ending notes of an instrument is delicate and precise. When paired up with the right amplification, it has this wonderful visceral impact every time a guitar is plucked or strummed. It has a great sense of resolution, detail, and transparency as well. For example, when I was listening to a track like Anit Asvik um, Liberty, which is a track I always listen to, the vocal sounded sweet and transparent, and the saxophone had visceral impact and great texture. The lower frequencies are fantastic on this speaker. It has texture, control, and balance. It is able to extend down to 50 or 60 hertz before uh, it starts to roll off without a problem. And with the right amplification, you can feel the bass in the lower octave and it will shake your house. It has great mid bass punch. It has fast and visceral punch. It has great timing and decay, and it has grunt and meat to the sound. Even more so than speakers like the Picard S400 or the Kef R3 or even the Tecton Double Impacts. But it's not a bloated or muffled sound, it's a very clear and distinguished bass notes. Soundstage is excellent and easily stretches out to the side of the speakers. And imaging is almost to the level of magical speakers. It has dead-on center imaging, especially with Toten speaker placement. The separation and space interpretation uh, in the speaker is next to none. Um, I would even put it side by side with Wilson Audio and Focals. It is okay with poor recordings, but really shine with better recordings. This is one of those speakers that can really take advantage and draw all the positives from a very well recorded track. At quieter volumes, the Elac Vela still have that beautiful highs and mids, but the bass really comes to life around mid to high level listening volume. Off axis response is very good. I enjoyed listening both in and out of the sweet spot, although I enjoyed the sweet spot 100% of the time, of course. Um, overall, all the elements come together to make a very full spectrum sound that is much bigger sounding than the size of the speaker suggests. Now talking about the placement of the speakers, these speakers are made so that it can fit most rooms, small, medium, large rooms, and that you know they're not they're meant to be not that placement sensitive. Now according to my testing, when I place them uh, closer to the back wall, I didn't feel like there was much problem. When I had them a little bit out towards the room, that's when it started to really shine. I liked how more spacious the speakers became. Um, giving a little bit more breathing room to the speaker really did do some magic. So I liked it a little bit out towards the room, around three foot or so, you know, maybe five foot if you have the room. Now I like the speakers towed in a little bit, but not too much. Now you can do a lot more toe-in if you want that dead center imaging um, and really sharp imaging right in front of you as if the singer is just right there. But I liked it a little bit with less toe-in because that gave me a larger sense of sound stage. At the same time, the imaging was still pretty darn dead center. So that's why I like that kind of placement. Now although these were meant for a smaller space, because of its slim design, I can really see that these can, you know, knock people's socks off in mid to large size rooms as well, with the sheer amount of bass authority and the high resolution. The Elac Velas are speakers that can really take advantage of good amplification. An AV receiver isn't going to cut it for this big boy. It also plays well with quality, low powered amplifiers since it's not that hard to drive with sensitivity of 88 dB but I found that Velas did benefit from more power in most cases. We will start with the big boys and move down into the price point from there. So here is the Luxman LX380 integrated tube amplifier that I just reviewed. I will link it in the, uh, below this video. This is a review I did for Soundstage and you can see me talk about the matching between the LX380 and the Velas in more detail in that review. But this is a great match and Velas never sounded better with any other component. It has increased in overall resolution, increased in space, wetness, holographic dimensionality, and great authority in the bass. This is the Parasound Hint 6. It is an overall very balanced performer. This is something you might want to consider uh, if you want a little bit more bass and want a little more gut to the sound. 
with the Elac Velas. It brings out everything good about the Elac Velas, but with a little more grunt to the sound. This is the Hegel H190, which is one of my all-time favorite. This is something you might want to consider if you like Velas, but want a little bit softer tone to the sound. Overall, it adds to the velvety smooth sound on the Velas as the H190 has similar characteristics in that regard. Okay, time for some budget options. So we have the Junction stack here, we have the preamplifier, and then we have the amplifier. This is if you like a little more forward and articulate sound in the mids and highs. Alternatively, a more costly option would be something like Name that would provide this more forward and articulate presentation, just like this combo right here. Lastly, something I do not have uh, as it was sent back before making this video, but I got to hear it with the Vela 407 is the Billy amplifier, which is a all-in-one integrated that I will link below this video. This is something you might want to consider if you are short on budget, but you want all-in-one solution and you want, more, you want bass control that is close to the Hegel H190 and the pair sound, with a peek into the tube world, what tube amplifiers like the Luxman LX380 can do for you in terms of that holographic soundstage. Now, in terms of caveats, I don't have much caveats in terms of its sound quality, and you can probably already guess why. Um, in terms of its design, again, I don't have much caveats per se, because it's really not that placement sensitive, nor room, room, uh, room sensitive. You can place these in small, medium, or large size rooms. Um, the only thing, and this is not much of a caveat, but more of a two cent to my viewers, is you have to be careful pairing these to an AV receiver. Well, not be careful, but I wouldn't suggest it. Um, these really do benefit from a good amplification, and everything I talked about in this review is more true when you hook it up to a good amplification rather than an AV receiver. So that's just my two cent. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and also subscribe for future videos. Um, giving us a thumbs up does help us uh, quite a bit, so I, I thank you for it. So thank you very much, and I'll see you guys on the next one.